dams that were put in now are coming to the end of their lifespans. Uh, dams are not forever, dams are like people. My name is Llewellyn Jones and I'm with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. We in the Pacific Northwest have a lot of benefits from low-cost hydropower, but there's a huge cost to fish. Our agency got involved in the 1990s with the Condit Dam project. We were very concerned about fish, uh, and there hadn't been fish passage for a very, very long time. And uh, after all the pros and cons and the costs were all weighed out, all of the stakeholders in 1999 decided that taking the dam out would be the best option. So starting in 2005, uh, this is back when we thought the removal was going to occur in 2006, a bunch of agencies got together, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Pacific for the state of Washington, um, the Yakima Nation, a uh, tribe that has ceded lands in the area and has Indian fishing and usually more custom fishing sites in the area. The U.S. Forest Service, National Marine Fisheries Service, and the U.S. Geological Survey. So I got together and they were all fisheries professionals that were working in the area and we were trying to figure out what exactly was going to happen when the dam removal occurred and also what roles or assistance we could provide to Pacific Corps with any of the actions that they would need to do for dam removal. The working group was uh, set up to, to again, address how we're going to deal with the fish during the removal, but also what to do with the fish after removal. Um, the working group, including the tribes and the federal agencies as well as the states, um, was very instrumental in helping draft a recovery plan for the White Salmon River, which dealt with what was going to happen after the dam came out and, and how they're going to manage both the recovery of the fish and what kind of habitat actions were needed in the basin to uh, work on the fish. Over my career, I've had the opportunity to participate in a number of different uh, stakeholder working groups. And what I found on Condit with the removal here and working with the White Salmon Fisheries a great group of folks from a variety of agencies and the Yakima Nation and others like ourselves that sit down, have a real interest in restoring the fisheries of the white salmon and work collaboratively together. As a project manager working through the specifics of dam removal, that group was a great sounding board and uh, a neat way to ask fisheries related questions and get information back. Everybody worked really well together and uh, it was a really fun group to participate in. Here on the White Salmon, the Yakima Nation is really excited about uh, reopening and bringing home the salmon. Uh, it's been close to a hundred years that they've been blocked. This is an ancestral place for the tribe. Uh, this hundred year period is just a blip in the tribe's uh, time on this landscape. And uh, folks are really excited about this. Uh, the opportunity uh, to reestablish fisheries and uh, bring back that important part of the ecosystem is paramount with the tribe. This is a resistance port weir and we're using it here in the White Salmon River, uh, River Mile 1.1. And what this is, is it allows fish to come up and screen the water, so to speak, and fish will encounter it and then hopefully move into these ponds that we have and used uh, a number of years ago for some of our hatchery collections in the area. Um, we're using it this year to capture Lower Columbia River to leap off Chinook Salmon uh, and capture these fish and move them upstream with Condit Dam to allow them to spawn naturally and not be affected by the sediment impacts from dam removal. We're working with uh, most of the partners in the White Salmon Working Group today to do fish salvage or fish rescue. Uh, you see behind me the dam and the pool of water below that. We're pumping that water down. Um, and in the background behind me the dam, you can see two holes. There's a metal plate partially covering one of the holes. 
and those that is the area where the tunnel will be excavated uh, to begin the dam removal. So they need to pump the water down in the pool right? so that they can uh, get some equipment uh, yeah, in here to do the work. And we're trying to get the fish out of this pool and downstream so that they, they have a way out if they want to leave. We were very successful at uh, our capture and transport at Thule Falls Chinook. Uh, in the year of dam removal, we were able to capture and move 679 total adults. And those fish went upstream and did spawn without impacts uh, to their spawning activities or, or to, uh, from sediment release from Condit Dam deconstruction activities. Um, we did follow up and did red surveys afterwards and did document um, a number of reds and so we thought that the effort was very successful and uh, again this was a brood year and a, and a year class that wasn't impacted by condit dam removal or the sediment that was released from condit dam deconstruction. Total we counted uh, 180 reds uh, that we documented that were upstream of the area from impacts and uh, that was a really successful effort for us. Uh, that was more than we anticipated. And those are fish that are going to emerge and leave the system in early 2012 and won't be impacted at all from Condit Dam deconstruction. We released a number of fish uh, at Hewson Falls, which was at about River Mile 7.8. And then we released a number of fish right at River Mile 5.3. And that bracketed the entire spawning area of where we thought fish were going to spawn and they in fact did spawn in those areas. On October 26th, 2011 was when they actually breached the dam. The way they did it was they put charges in a, in a tunnel that they had uh, made under the dam and then that day they blew that tunnel out and the reservoir drained out actually in about 40 minutes. It was dramatic. I was at a ceremony just up the hill from where they had this, um, the breach of the dam, and then they let us go and stand on the dam uh, and just watch this river recreating itself. You could see the canyon being reformed, and it was so powerful. I could feel the vibration of the river flowing through as it reconnected itself, first time in almost 100 years.